Fallwinkels. Afternoon. Welcome to the meeting of the Housing Supervisory Board. Um, just a normal housekeeping. We're not expecting a fire drill today. In the event the alarm is sounding, please leave the building and gather at the front. I'm obliged to inform you the meeting's being live streamed and recorded, and ask you please to ensure mobile phones are switched on. Um, I think in a minute I'll just ask you to introduce yourselves to any of us that shouldn't take long. Um, so. Councilor Robert Macy, Chair of the Housing Supervisory Board. Uh, Councilor Vincent, Vice Chairman. Uh, Councilor Tony Parsons from Basin Hill, Column and Sutton. Councilor Julian Dean, Cross Hill. Councilor Jeff Anderson, and I'm representing Halska. Robert Ray, Managing Director of Cornell Developments. Jane Trithewitt, Assistant Director, Homes and Communities. And Shelley Davis, Committee Expert. Lucy Heath Klein, from the Missionary Manager, Homes and Communities. You don't have to sit that far away if you don't want to. It's me. <laughs> 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 I'm starting to think it was me. <laughs> okay, um, we've had apologies for absence have been received from Councillor Simon Jones, okay. Councillor Heather Kidd, Councillor Dan Thomas, and Councillor Robert Tyndall. Item two is disposable pecuniary interests. Has anybody got anything they need to prepare? No? Okay. Three is the minutes to confirm the meeting minutes of the meeting held on the 31st of March and the 12th of May. Can be moved by Okay. I'll second. Okay, everyone in favour? Okay. 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 Item four is public question time. We haven't had any. Item five is member question time, and we haven't had any. Um, so we will move on to item six, which I think over to Jane. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, there you go. Thank you, Chair. Um, so uh, this is the uh, Cornelly Terminus Limited update report, um, and the purpose of this is to update the Housing Supervisory Board on the progress of the company against its approved 10-year business plan, um, including some updates on uh, its schemes at the Frith, Ellesmere Walk and Ifton Heath. Um, uh, this uh, um, includes um, uh, investment in contractors and subcontractors uh, from within Shropshire, includes details of the average energy performance uh, certificates uh, being achieved and the carbon savings associated with those, the employment and training opportunities being created through the activity of the company, and also some of the um, educational settings that have been supported by CDL's activity. Um, associated with this, uh, there is a risk register which is monitored by uh, the Homes and Communities team along with the CDL Monitoring Board, which is a, an officer board. Um, and uh, this covers the risks for the council um, in its capacity as the single shareholder of CDL. Um, the CDL development uh, schemes are being delivered within the terms of the approved shareholder agreement and loan funding arrangements. Um, so, uh, in accordance with the terms of the shareholder agreement, um, CDL is required to report to the shareholder via this board at quarterly intervals uh, to talk about how uh, it is meeting on their housing need and to uh, update us on the uh, objectives uh, contained in the business plan. Um, uh, so, back in March of this year, uh, this board approved CDL's 10 year business plan, uh, which set out its aims to deliver 728 homes. Um, and to date, 91 of those have been delivered, uh, with a further 637 um, in the pipeline, of which 138 will be homes for affordable tenure. Uh, so, uh, in general terms, the progress of CDL against its business plan uh, continues to be satisfactory. Um, and I will turn to Harpreet uh, for some more detail now that's contained in Appendix A. Thank you, Jane. Um, I think there's um, just a number of things I'd like to highlight. I think the first is that the first the development of the thrift is now being completed with all the properties being sold. We sold our final property last week, which was great news yeah. for us. Um, we have had a number of delays on our existing two sites. Um, Ellesmere Walk, which unfortunately I can't talk about because of various legal actions going on in the background at the moment. Um, but 
but um, in relation to Ifton Heath, we've had some issues associated with warranty providers, which have now been resolved, and that development is now back on programme. However, we're not expecting our um, the after show home to be available until the early next year now, rather than November, which was what we were originally aiming for. Um, overall, in terms of opportunities, we continue to work with the council to identify new development opportunities and also within the private market as well. Um, we're on the verge of signing a number of deals, which will hopefully allow us to uh, move forward with securing our pipeline and moving that pipeline forward during the next um, 12 to 18 months. I think we're all aware of some of the inflationary pressures at the moment within the construction industry and the associated challenges, both in terms of construction costs, but also around house prices as well. The limited availability of housing as well, and these are issues we're monitoring very closely as an organisation. Um, we're also um, very much aware around the risk around um, interest rate rises. And something that we've discussed previously within this uh, meeting is around the interest rate that Cornelby has been charged um, for development activity. Now that we have completed our first development, a secured planning consent on four, five developments in total, and have two on site for the first one, hopefully starting late summer, early autumn, we are in, in the process of going to the council to renegotiate our interest rates. That will then protect us potentially from further um, interest rate rises and also make other developments potentially more affordable for us moving forward. Um, I think the, the other big, big thing for us is just the kind of general support we're getting at the moment from council colleagues and from our board, the CDL board and the housing supervisory board. I think there's a recognition we're in choppy waters at the moment across the building industry, uh, but we continue to focus on those council priorities in particular building a range of different homes, exploring different commercial opportunities um, and also making sure there's a continued focus on creating um, homes that local people can live within as well. One of the things we're very uh, proud of at the thrift is the number of key workers we've home. So for instance, I believe there's three nurses in total who've purchased a property on our site, I think six teachers as well. Um, so again, what we're finding is uh, a lot of people from the local area struggle to get on the housing ladder or moving into our, within our first development, moving into our properties. They've been very popular uh, because of that. Thank you. Okay, um, that's good to hear. And certainly it's, it's those sort of practical things of, of the end users and so on that we're, we're interested in. So um, in that case, I think I'll open it up to members. Is there anything? Uh, Peter or Jane have touched on that you want to particularly get into with them. Yeah, Jane. I was going to make a joke about we just need some policemen on the police work so you can, you know, have a nice lively relationship building situation going on there. Um, <laughs> um, but I won't. Um, I, I, I'm just interested. So yeah, inflation pressures absolutely. But I'm just interested in your views on the. Um, you know, so the, the other pressures in terms of in terms of skills and and workforce. I mean, we've shot the council in the process of, of developing its new economic strategy. So it'd just be interesting to be informed on where we are with that. And and um, um, and then associated to that, there's, there's, there's a bit in here about about social value. On, as it happens, I've been doing some work on on that. And I'm just wondering from a council point of view as to how we measure that. The outcomes of that. There's, there's, a, there's a portal called the Social Value Portal, which seems to be a really useful tool, which I see quite a few councils are now using as a way of actually measuring the, the social value outcomes, not just in the front end of what the contracts look like, but actually what the impact might be. So that might be something interesting just to explore. Uh, shall I go first with the, um, if I can touch on the, the labour issues, um, which have been acute for a number of years now. Um, what we're finding is that that's adding, um, because of a lack of labour, it's, it's got three things. First of all, it is related to how easy it is to actually get trades on site and then keep them on site. Um, so what we're finding is that the, there is a, you know, a very, there seems to be a drop of skilled labour available. And um, one of the things that's really interesting from my perspective is when I go on site, you'd normally expect a site to be made up of a certain age group. And it's not that age group anymore. It's you know it's it's, it's older than I've, I've ever seen it previously. Um, I think the the second part for us for me as well is um, just around how that relates to cost. 
So what we're finding is that with less skilled labour being available, um, what we're finding is that having a direct impact on the cost to build homes. Um, what, you're, what we're finding is you've probably seen in the press recently that house prices during the last couple of years have increased by 20 percent. Uh, what's not advertised in the same way is that certain trades um, have, have resulted in um, construction costs increasing in between, between 30 and 35 percent and labour as well as the shortage of materials is a, is a direct result of that as well. So you've got a kind of perfect storm where people want to be able to get on the housing ladder but the houses are very expensive but also costing a lot more to build um, and so people, you know the house builders like ourselves are having to take a hit on the margins because of that it's not it's not it's not in parallel the inflation pressures were a lot higher i think there is a lot we can do um, in terms of that work so one of the things we're really proud of is the number of apprenticeships that we've supported so on our first site i think there's been over seven sorry, eight apprentices on that site. At the moment at Ifton Heath, we're working with Shrewsbury College and there's five apprentices on already working on that site. Um, we're also looking at doing a strategic um, agreement with Shrewsbury College around some of the new skill sets. So as we all know, boilers you know, will, will not be used in new builds from 2025. And potentially you won't be able to have them in the property from, I think it's 2030 from memory or 2035. Um, the date seems to be changing. It depends what you read and what, what on what day. But we're looking to, because with London Road, we've been looking to put a lot of SOC heat pumps in there. The co college had recently started a course to look at SOC heat pump installations, and we're doing some teaming up work there to create those kind of op training opportunities going forward. So we, we have our eye on what we can do to support that kind of labour market and making sure that um, you know it's sustainable over the long term, but it is causing us immediate problems, and it has been for a little while. Um, in, sorry. Yeah. So just sorry, just to pick up on the, the, the question about social value, um, uh, Neil Evans um, uh, is leading on the, the social value um, uh, assessment. So in terms of um, our um, contracts, all the council's contracts, there is an assumption that we will be generating social value outcomes from all of the that the council undertakes and all the, the funding that it spends. Um, uh, and there is, a, there is a measure of social value that Neil is, is applying through that, but I've, I've just sent a message to you to inquire when this might be reporting to, to Cabinet to understand, you know, how, how that kind of uh, feeds back for, for awareness um, in order to, to give you a bit more detailed information on that. So, but it is something that uh, we are paying attention to. If I can come in in terms of the company's approach, so the board was very keen to also collect um, information on social value. So we have a number of KPIs um, related to local labour, employment opportunities and apprenticeships and also um, opportunities related to all met housing demand. So how many people from the local areas such as key works are moving into our properties? That's reported to our board on a quarterly basis. Um, and we, you know, the board were very keen on myself to make it very specific so you can actually measure those outcomes. So that's the way in which we're approaching it at the moment. So the board get those updated regularly, and I think it's something I've spoken to Lucy and Jane about as part of our annual review to bring that back to the housing supervisory board. Mm -hmm. So we've got our first large development now. We'll have, you know, there'll be a few more developments, so we can really see how we're progressing on that journey. Thank you. Okay, is there anything anybody else wants to ask on that report or are we happy to note it? I think it's showing very good progress and uh, the, the fact that, you know, all of the houses at the Frith have now been snapped up. That is an excellent uh, situation and uh, I think we'll probably talk later on about some of the other issues at the other sites, but I mean, I, it looks good to me. I'm happy that we pass back our, our thanks to the board of the, the company yeah. and congratulate them on the selling out of that first site. As you say, it's a milestone for them. So yeah, absolutely. Pass that back to them. Yeah, yeah. Can I ask? Um, obviously, when we did the little tour, yeah. um, you could see that there was key issues with Alice Mill Watt and flooding in particular. Have those problems been resolved, or have we still got the situation where we've got a flooded site? Um, it's not flooded anymore. Um, I'll say that now. It may have been after this morning. 
Um, so there are a number of issues on that site, which um, unfortunately I can't talk about in a public session because of ongoing legal issues. Um, but I'd be happy to maybe discuss what I am able to discuss within the closed session, if that's okay. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Move on to the next one. So the next one is our, our report to cabinet. We discussed sending that we should be reporting back to, to some way and it was decided cabinet was the most appropriate. So I think we're on the agenda for June, but we won't be named July. Um, so I'll ask Jane just to run through the, the, sort of the draft that's been circulated of what we'd like to include. So. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much, Chair. So um, uh, this is really uh, uh, picking up on the areas and themes that we want to uh, focus on in the report or recommending it focused on in the report um, uh, with the intention to uh, then finalise it and uh, uh, in consultation with um, the Chair um, uh, uh, to, to prepare that report and submit it to, to Cabinet. So what we would like it to cover um, uh, is to uh, remind them of the, the House's Supervisory Board's Terms of Reference, um, uh, which includes uh, regular reporting to Cabinet um, uh, and ensuring that uh, Cornovie is meeting unmet housing needs and delivering the objectives of its business plan. Um, uh, we want to um, uh, emphasise the uh, role of the Housing Supervisory Board providing that strategic direction to the company as well as overseeing performance um, and all within the terms of the uh, shareholder agreement. Um, uh, we'll provide an overview of uh, CDL's delivery to date, the sort of things we've been talking about today, um, uh, and projections for delivery over uh, the coming year, um, and uh, detail the current business plan and what it actually contains. Um, uh, so, uh, in terms of the financial implications as well, I think we need to explain the financial arrangements uh, between the Council and Core Navy, the nature of the loan facility in place, um, and how performance against the terms of the loan is monitored. Um, the expected return to the Council over the life of the business plan um, and what the current negotiations are on the restatement of the loan agreement, uh, which is due to conclude in the summer. Um, we will also pick up on the uh, climate change aspects of CDL's activity, their approach to energy and fuel consumption um, and, the, and the range of activity they have in, in, uh, uh, in relation to specific sites as well and how they're performing um, uh, on, in each case. Um, uh, uh, we want to uh, highlight the impact of Cornobi's uh, activities in terms of uh, all of these um, areas. Um, so really uh, what we'd like to see, is, uh, if you can, as the Housing Supervisory Board approve this outline uh, of content um, and uh, for us to uh, progress and produce the report as proposed. Uh, I suppose the, the big question here is, is there anything missing? I think there's plenty in there, but is there anything we, we think is a ball that we're missing that we picked up on during our, our recent discussions? So, Julie? Thanks. I, um, I'm just wondering whether there, there needs to be some benchmarking against uh, delivery of affordable housing by others or, you know, uh, within, within the area and possibly against, you know, comparable comparable um, setups in other in other areas where, where councils are trying to deliver affordable housing in this way. That's something we can Yeah, yeah. certainly. Certainly. Okay. Yeah, can, I, can I just start yeah. ask on that? <clears throat> Obviously it, would, it needs to be relatively light for light because our, our homes are, are more eco-friendly than a lot of other providers. So you just need to be a bit careful that you take that yeah. into account. Yeah. Otherwise their delivery because of the difference in cost, for example, may be significantly better than ours. Um, that's the only thing I'd worry is that it's going to be very difficult to compare like for like. We, we can explore ways of, of uh, uh, examining that query um, and set something out, I'm sure. Yes, understood. Is there anything else that we want to, to pick up? I mean, hopefully these are going to be reasonably regular now back to cabinet so it would just be a case of what we've been covering during our meetings and, and other things they may have some suggestions for us of what yeah, they like to as well maybe it could be for them to suggest to us what they think's missing as yeah. well um, so but if not then we'll we'll take that away get that get that prepared um i think we'll we'll try and get it circuit make sure it's circulated when it's ready as well um so that you've definitely it's been picked out that you've you've seen it um <clears throat> 
obviously if you want to attend on the day and you want to come and, and speak to it as well, I, I mean, I'm, I'm reasonably relaxed about that in terms of we're pretty well together with, on this, so mm. that's fine. Um, okay, right. In that case, we will take that take that away, get the final version done, and appear before cabinet. Um, Cook some broth for him tomorrow. <laughs> So hopefully they're, hopefully they're, they're happy with what we're doing is, is this. So, OK, right. Item 8 is exclusion of the press and public. So to resolve in accordance with the provisions of Schedule 12A of the Local Government Act 1972 and paragraph 10.43 of the Council's Access to Information, the press and public be excluded from consideration of the following items. Have you agreed? OK, thanks. Sis. I'll second that. Yeah, okay. thanks, Yeah, you're all in favour? Okay, we'll do that. I'll ask. I'll wait till we stop live streaming.